Hi, this is Ken Johnson for another episode of SecCast. This tutorial is an OWASP Top 10 2013 A4 category, specific to the Ruby on Rails framework. OWASP's A4 category is titled Insecure Direct Object Reference. This is a very specific vulnerability and not a generic category of weaknesses. Rather, this vulnerability happens for a very specific reason, which we will discuss in this video. In this tutorial, we will discuss the weakness, demonstrate the vulnerability, and discuss as well as demonstrate prevention steps. Let's get started. The following page is hosted on OWASP's website and covers insecure direct object reference specifics, such as how the vulnerability occurs, how to detect it, and how to prevent it. What you'll notice in their code example is that an access control decision is being made based upon a parameter the user supplies. The user can always change this value, and that is really the core of this problem. We'll discuss this concept more as we proceed. Before we go farther, let's show an example of actually exploiting this weakness. The following is a controller for employee work information. If you look at line 3, you'll notice we decide who this user is and thus what information to show this user based on the user ID the user provides us. This is a very clear cut case of insecure direct object reference. I can't promise this vulnerability is always so easy to identify, but if you understand the root of the problem, you'll have greater odds of finding these problems in your code or preventing them to begin with. What you see here is our vulnerable web application. We want to navigate to the work info page. Note that I am seeing my user information as of right now, Ken Johnson. I want to see someone else's data, so I'm going to guess that the numeric value in the URL is a user ID. I'll start arbitrarily with the number 2. As you can see, the application returned another user's profile data. In addition to exploiting this weakness, let's see if that social security number is obtainable. Viewing the source code and searching for the last four, we see that the full social security number is available. Even more of a win for us. Okay, so we understand the potential impact that these vulnerabilities have. Let's talk a little bit about prevention. This weakness is fairly easy to fix. Instead of making access decisions based on a parameter, let's comment out the previous code and make access decisions based off the current user object, which retrieves the user's information from their cookies. Reviewing the application controller, you can see what we mean. Much like most Rails applications, we've created a current user object, which is the result of taking profile information from a session, which is significantly more secure than a parameter, and then making an access decision based on that object. Let's navigate back to the work information section. Once again, you see my profile details, Ken Johnson. Let's change that user ID in the URL once again. As you can see, my information is still returned as we are making decisions on what to show the user based on the user session. There are other ways this problem can occur. Sometimes it does not make sense to leverage the user session. Sometimes we want to call a resource and ensure that only those resources are available to our users, such as a list of files, regardless of who the user is. In these cases, a whitelist approach makes sense as one method to solve this problem. As you can see in our code on lines 9 through 11, we take a parameter called name from the user, instantiate a file object with that file's name and path and send it to the user's browser. The problem is the user could request any file that this application has access to. Let's demonstrate. First, we want to click on the file to download. In our intercepting proxy, we can see the request waiting to be sent to the server. 
Note that the parameter called name contains a path to the file as well as the file name health and stuff. We're going to change that path to config initializers secret token rb and see if we can't grab a file that is definitely accessible to the application and truly dangerous for us to own. It appears that we are able to grab the application secret token. This is not good. Let's see how we can go about fixing this. Firstly, let's just get rid of this download method as we need to rewrite it. Second, let's create a private method called file keys. This method will return a hash. Keys are a numeric identifier and values are the file associated with that key. We'll recreate the download method. Next, we need a begin statement so that we can rescue any exceptions that may occur. We'll rescue exceptions by redirecting users back to the benefit form section of the application. And we'll create a key object that consists of the name parameters value. We define a default file object in case the key the user provides us cannot be found in the file keys method. If the file keys hash does have a key that matches our user supplied input, either a one or two, we will return the file the user intended to download. Otherwise, we'll send the file object created on line 10. We use the send file method to send the user the appropriate document and provide the file object as an argument, as well as declare our intent to send this file as an attachment. Okay, all that technical information aside, what we are really saying is that the user can supply us with a file name of one or two. If the user provides anything other than a one or two, we still send them a file, but it is the default dental and stuff file. It's just that we refuse to send them an arbitrary file. Meaning they can pick from a list of files versus retrieving any file they want. Let's try downloading the file to see if the intended functionality works. Note that we requested a health and stuff PDF and were presented with this document. Let's test this from a security perspective. We will change this value from the number one to the location of our config file. We know this won't work because the path and file name isn't a valid key in the file keys hash. So the application will instead send us the dental and stuff PDF. As expected, the application returned the dental and stuff PDF file. To recap, we've discussed insecure direct object reference, shown how it occurs, demonstrated how the vulnerability is attacked, and provided two examples of code resolution or prevention. I'm Ken Johnson. This has been another episode of SecCast. Thanks for watching.